Hi everyone, welcome back to the Space Koala channel. Today it will be a very quick how-to um, showing you how to optimize the WBPP weighted batch pre-processing script in PixInsight specifically to improve the automatic selection of calibration frames to be used as well as how to use the grouping functionality in general. Let's get on my computer. Let's start in my file browser here. I have uh, the results of one of my telescopes from a week long shooting session where I was shooting two different targets with the same telescope, same camera. And so the way I have downloaded those is I have created this folder, which I have named this specific string of characters. And I'll explain what each of these things mean in a second. And then Within this folder, I have three further folders that I've created, which is target tadpoles, that was one of my targets, target Caroline's Rose, which is one of my other targets, and I have one for the flats. Um, this folder is this folder name is not meaningful at all. I just like to be organized, and everything else here was then created by WBPP. Let's just see what happens when we import all of those files into WBPP. I will open up these three folders and hit command a to select all now we have a bunch of these images but nothing is really grouped this is what it looks like by default if you don't configure this whole grouping thing so everything is just grouped into um, the sensor resolution and then the filter if you have it otherwise it's no filter and then the length of the exposure this is both for the flats and for the lights now you see i have everything all at once here and then in the calibration it takes the first matching dark and the first matching everything not considering any other parameter that you might want to do for example if you are using darks you want them to match the temperature of your lights so if you have a dark library with multiple temperatures you want to make sure that you're using the correct one especially if your camera is suffering from amp glow then you really want to match that um, so this is what it looks like by default and then here it's just creating one stack per exposure length per filter in this case since i have two different objects i would have to do these one by one now i think a lot of people already know that that you can use um, these keywords but i just think that they're more useful than most people realize so let me demonstrate what happens usually i have all of these on i just turn them off for the purposes of this demonstration if I go back to lights, for example, and I turn on the gain by clicking this little cog wheel, now it is grouping my photos per gain. So if I have shot images at different gain values, or you could put ISO there, then that would automatically match the correct cal calibration frames together. Then I have temperature. And how does it know what the temperature is? Because in this case, uh, this is just here, but I could have a different gain in temperature. That would be a different group. Um, how does it know the temperature? Well, unfortunately, it is not reading the temperature value from the file itself. So you have to tell it. In this case, this is why I had this header in this folder. The name here is just a series of key value pairs where the key is cam for camera and the value is 1600 mm. Then the key is temperature and the value is minus 20. Keep in mind that between the key and the value, you have a dash. So if you have a negative temperature, then you just have a double dash here, but it works just fine. And then I have key gain value 139 because this is the camera that I used. One thing to keep in mind here that the value here is case sensitive while the key isn't. So that's why I have an uppercase MM and then an uppercase C here. Now, what's the benefit here? The reason this is saving me time and it's reassuring me that I'm using the correct calibration frames is because I've been using this for a really long time and therefore I have built up a bias library and a dark library, some of which is always loaded at any given time. I don't even need to be loading any calibration frames for a new session because as long as I have the save groups on exit enabled here, these will not be reset. So if I want to do a new session, I just clear the lights and the flats. Everything else stays here. It remembers all the values because mind you, this is what my calibration library looks like. It is all structured in this form. So I have top level, I have the available camera 
And then that is just for organizational purposes at this point, because since I've created the masters with WBPP, these values are now also present in the, the headers of these files, but I just find it nicer to organize them into these folders. Anyway, the benefit here is that if I enable all of these for pre, meaning pre-processing, I can be sure that it is going to use the correct one because it will add these columns here and it will only take a matching dark or a matching bias or a matching flat if all the values are there. If it doesn't find it, it will not take one because these grouping keywords are somewhat stronger than the default parameters for choosing. For example, um, you can use a non-matching dark if you want to, and then it recommends you to, to optimize it. However, in this way, I'll be sure that it will complain if I don't find a matching um, calibration frame. What else can you do? In the post calibration section, uh, we still just have the grouping based on the length of the exposure and then the filter. However, if I want to make sure that, first of all, I save the information of what the target was somewhere in the file header, and also if I shot the stars, for example, at the same exposure length, or if I shot nebulas at the same exposure length, I don't want to st try to stack those together. And what you can do is you can select some of these grouping keywords here as a post, meaning post calibration. So the way to do that is to click once, twice, and three times, because this way it's only using them as a post calibration parameter. Once you marked one of these grouping keywords as a post calibration keyword in the registration reference section down here, you get a new option saying auto by target. If I select that, it will automatically regroup the images and it will not accidentally stack two different images together. I mean, realistically, you wouldn't stack them together because it wouldn't be able to register. It would just reject a lot of them. And this is particularly useful because if you have a lot of images to stack from different telescopes or you just shot different targets, you can just spend five, 10 minutes once to make sure that everything is set up correctly and you quickly go through the images and see if anything is out of the ordinary. And if they look good, you set it up correctly and you just let it go and it can run for 24 hours if it needs to. The, the keywords that I showed here are the main ones that I use, but occasionally I do add other ones. For example, this one that is disabled right now is night. And this is very useful if you shot the same target over multiple nights, but you had to move the telescope in between or it was different occasions and therefore you also have different flats. If the exposure time and everything was the same, then of course you don't want to use different darks and different biases. However, you wanna make sure that you are using the correct flat frames for each of them. So in that case, it is super useful here. So just by setting up the four, five, whatever number of grouping keywords that are useful for your specific use case. You set it up once, you build your calibration library uh, using these. Over time, you do save time, not just because you can leave the whole calibration library in here, but because you will spot immediately if your calibration is off because it will not be able to find the correct dark frame, for example. I hope that I've been able to show something interesting to those of you that didn't know how to use the grouping keywords in the past. And to those of you who did use them, maybe you didn't really realize how extensively you could use them. So I hope that it was useful to many of you. And as you saw, I actually already ran this integration before. So now I have two images to process. I'm gonna get down to that right now and I wish you clear skies.